Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Money Matters with Doug Jones, the personal finance show focused on moving you forward financially. So for today's show, I thought we'd focus on small business. We're all aware that small business is extremely important to the Canadian and local economy, but the operating of small business brings with it its own challenges. And the last year has certainly brought those to the forefront. So I thought we would explore uh, options that are available and resources that are available to small business owners. And joining us today is Michael Litwack. Michael is a senior manager over at BDO in their uh, financial advisory services practice. Michael, welcome to the show. Thanks, Doug. So, Michael, before we uh, get into some of the uh, exploring some of the options about business, small business owners, could you explain to us what you do on a daily basis over at BDO? Sure. So, as you said, I'm a senior manager with uh, BDO's financial advisory services team, and that team's quite large. It encompasses a very wide range of service lines, whether it be our, my own service line, which is insolvency and financial uh, recovery, uh, but there's also human resources, information technology, uh, corporate finance, m and It's quite a large team. So, so my role focuses in on the advisory part for the insolvency space, and that really is a question of is a company having trouble or is a, is a lender looking to evaluate uh, a company that they might loan money to? But we really work hand in hand with the entire advisory team uh, to address what those problems might be. Because while I might have an expertise in insolvency, I certainly don't have an expertise in M&A, but I can be sure that our team can handle that. Uh, so, so my role is specifically in insolvency, but working with that team. And then to take it to the next step, as a licensed licensed insolvency trustee, uh, we have certain tools available to us pursuant to the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act that other advisors would not have. And most people who are watching this might have heard of bankruptcies or proposals. Those are the tools that I'm talking about, amongst others that uh, I'm assuming that we'll get to uh, as part of our discussion today. Right. So maybe you could go into um, your area of expertise is obviously helping restructure financially difficult companies, but who exactly do you help? Is it big companies, small companies? Who is it that you're spending your time with? So it's a great question. It's, the answer is everybody. Um, anybody from a sole proprietorship, a small mom and pop shop, all the way up to very, very, very large corporations. Uh, but my specific focus, just based on historically what I've worked on, is what we call small business. And when we say small business, just some statistics on that, there's in Canada, in the entire country, we have 1.2 million employer-owned small businesses in the country. And uh, out of those, about 98% are considered small businesses. And the definition there is up to 99 employees, but it's, it's a little bit more complex than that because you might have a, a company that has very high revenue, but is not overly complex in, in how it operates. And the inverse of that is you might have a very complex company that doesn't actually have high revenues. So to say that, you know, who do I deal with? Yeah, it's small business, but I don't want to define that. It really is, we can help anybody and it just matters what is the issue that we're looking for and then, and then going through that. That being said, Canada and Simcoe County and, and Ontario, for the most part, we're built up on, on small businesses. That is who makes up our communities. That is who we deal with. And, and when the small businesses are doing well, we're all doing well. So to say, who do I help? Pretty much everybody who runs a business is going to be the answer. Okay. Thank you. So your definition of small business, you know, under a hundred employees encompasses most companies, as you've noted, and financial challenges can happen to these businesses for a variety of reasons. It, you know, the, the pandemic of the last year has certainly brought many of those to the forefront, but there's also a significant other, uh, elements that can affect a small business. You could have uh, increased competition, the change in demographics, new technology. There's a whole pile of different events which can prove challenging to a company. And so are there a list of early warning signs that you could provide viewers of things to watch for that might indicate that it, there's a time where they should be reaching out to someone for some advice? Certainly. So it's, there's, there's obviously a lot of what we'll refer to as these red flags, certain events that if they happen, this is when as a business owner, you should really start asking some questions of yourself and of your advisors as, is there a problem? And just to, I'll, I'll name off a few, and certainly this is not going to be an overly comprehensive list. The list can be almost infinitely big, what these problems might be, because every business has its unique circumstances. But just to go through some uh, that I can think of off the top would be 
probably the biggest one is cash flow. And, and when I say cash flow, it's uh, are there certain suppliers that aren't being paid and are sort of calling you a lot? Are there suppliers that are asking for COD payments? A uh, really big one would be how, how delayed are you in paying your suppliers? So was it typically it was always within 30 days, everybody was being paid, and now you're seeing that you're trying to push it farther and farther. And most importantly of that would be, are you paying the CRA on time, the Canada Revenue Agency for employer source deductions, HST? These are, these are debts that aren't always pressed to be collected on by the CRA necessarily. You might not have the CRA calling you every day like your suppliers or your landlord might, but it's a question of if you see yourself not in a position to pay those as they become due, that is a huge red flag. Uh, and I'm happy to talk about that if you want, but that is a big one. The other one would be, how, how profitable is your company? You know, every company might have its ups and downs. You might have a great year and a few bad years and another great year, and that's great. And that's totally fine. A lot of businesses run like that, but how, how long has it been since you've been profitable? And is there a plan or is it obvious to you that you'll return to profitability or do you see it as sort of, I hope things get better, but I don't have a plan for it. That, that's, a, that's a big red flag. Uh, another one would be, what's your relationship with your finan the, the financial institutions that you deal with? So has your bank been calling you a lot? Uh, is your bank trying to get you to find somebody else to finance your company? Are you trying to obtain additional financing and not getting it? Um, that's, that's a red flag because these financial institutions, they're monitoring what you're going through from a, finance, from a financial perspective, and they might see things that you don't. And if they're worried, you should be worried because it means they're seeing something that is concerning. And that's obviously, if they have red flags, you should too. Uh, the, uh, another one, the last one I'll talk about right now is how much of your personal finances as a small business owner or director, how much are you putting into the business? So if you find yourself like, when's the last time you took a salary, for example, if you're not taking a salary every year as a business owner, and it's different if it's a, a new company and you're starting to trying to get started off. But if you, let's say you used to take a salary or you and your family members that might be working with you were taking a salary and now they're not because you can't afford to pay that, that's a flag. Uh, as well as, are you having, let's say every year at the end of the day, are you having to put more money into your business? Are you, are you personally paying supplies with your credit cards? So those are the kind of flags that we very often see um, and have to be brought up instantly right. so that we can address them and, and understand what is the real problem here. One of the ones I think we should explore a little bit more because it's one that I encounter quite a bit is the, uh, the director liability to what you referred to as source deductions, which is the payroll deductions or HST. Maybe you want to explain that one a bit more to viewers because as you noted, it's an easy one to skip on a monthly basis if you're experiencing some cash flow problems. But it is one that you really do not want to skip because there's some negative consequences to that. So maybe we'll go into that one a bit. Yeah, it's, I think it's probably one of the most important things to talk about when you're, when you're talking about small business advisory. A lot of directors or business owners don't necessarily know how intertwined their own personal situation might be with their business. And it's, it's very easy to say, oh, it's an incorporated company and I'm separate. But that's not always the case because there are certain statutory, there's legal uh, implications for you as a business owner that you will be liable or the CRA can pursue you as the director for unremitted source deductions, which is, the, which is a big one that accrues for a lot every time if you have payroll, uh, and unremitted HST. So even if you were to shut down your business, if those amounts are owing, you as a business director, or you as the owner of the business, will, they'll pursue you personally. Uh, take it even one step further, you might not be loaning business to your company, but have you guaranteed leases? Have you guaranteed loans to your bank? Because even though you might not be loaning money to the company directly, there, there very well might be all these other implications that you as a director of the business can have to your personal finances. And we can talk about the separation there, but you might be personally liable or personally exposed to a very high level, even though you are technically separate from this company, just by virtue of being the director. And I think it's important to note too, for um, people who are watching the show that some of the restructuring options, when they get into proposals, if you're trying to restructure the company with a proposal, there's a requirement to pay the outstanding source deductions in full within six months. And so some of these nuances 
people aren't going to be aware of until they talk to someone like yourself, Michael, but they can have a significant effect on being able to restructure the company. And that's why staying on top of something like source deductions is so vitally important. But you've also touched on another thing that I encounter all the time, which is people not understanding how directly linked they are to their company. I meet people who think they run a company, but it's actually a sole proprietorship, and I have to explain the difference to them. Or they have an incorporated company, but as you've noted, they have personally guaranteed the lease. They have personally guaranteed uh, the bank. And so maybe you can explore the difference between the sole prop and the incorporated business, and then uh, sort of the intertwining of their personal debts. Yeah, so a sole proprietorship is just an individual who's running a business under their own name effectively, and there's really no separation between the business and, and themselves. Whereas once you have a separate incorporated entity, it is considered two separate people from, let's say, a legal standpoint. Uh, but as you noted, and as we just discussed, there is intertwining between the director and that separate legal entity that connects them on a, on a level which, unfortunately, leaves a director or business owner personally exposed beyond what they would think because they have this separate entity. So, well, yes, there are some additional protections from having an incorporated company as opposed to a sole proprietorship. It's not as straightforward as saying, oh, because you have that company, therefore there's never any exposure. There obviously is. And it's something that unfortunately we see uh, a lot of individuals who don't call us early enough to identify this problem to them. And they, the, the longer it goes, the more and more they push off, let's say, CRA for HST or source deductions, the worse that problem gets, and the fewer options are available to them. Because as you pointed out, some options, such as we'll talk about proposals, there's certain legal requirements to make that. And if there's too much owing to the CRA for source deductions, it's no longer a viable option. So uh, the one thing I can't emphasize to, to business owners enough is just pick up the phone. The sooner you call us or the sooner you call any advisor, the sooner we can identify you what your options are. And if you wait too long, you lose out on the ability to exercise some of those options. Yeah, so you actually just picked up on what was going to be my very next question is if you're a business owner and you identify that you've got some of these challenges, what's your advice on how quickly should someone reach out to you? And, and, I, and I think that, you know, because I do the same type of work as you, that it, you can't emphasize it enough that um, it is critically important that you get in sooner rather than later just because of the exploration of options that are become limited if, uh, if we get in too late. And I don't know if you want to expand on that anymore. Uh, you, you just hit the nail on the head. I mean, look, our, our success stories are when we don't need to use a remedy pursuant to the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act. We're very good at finding other alternatives through our adv advisory team to help business owners that are very often far better outcomes for the business owner. But those options aren't available if you, if, if you wait too long. And it does, it, listen, it, does, it doesn't cost anything to pick up the phone and make a call. You might as well be informed as to what options are available to you and then make your own informed decision. I agreed. I, I couldn't agree more with that statement. So I think that the next part that the viewers are going to want to hear is, okay, if I've identified that there's some problems, then I want to know what my options are. So I know that we're going to need to go to break. And when we come back from break, what I thought we would do is we'd get into exploring some of the options that are available to people on how to resolve their financial difficulties in their business and, and have it go forward as a profitable business. Welcome back to Money Matters with Doug Jones. So before the break, we were talking about small businesses, how important they are to the Canadian economy and our local economy, but that they can experience challenges. And so we're joined today by Michael Litwack from BDO, and we were going through some of the warning signs and things to look for, which would indicate that there could be an impending problem that you should probably address sooner rather than later. And we emphasize the importance of meeting with someone sooner, as soon as possible, because we actually have more options to help people if we get in early rather than late. Um, but one of the questions that I thought we should explore is what options are available to you. And some of the viewers are actually going to be wondering, Michael, you know, I, I got a business. I don't want it to go bankrupt. Why would I talk to a licensed insolvency trustee? Why would you be one of the first people I would speak to? And I'd like you to explain that to the viewers. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And there's, there is a big stigma against the word bankruptcy itself. Uh, I think what's important to emphasize here is 
yes, I'm a licensed insolvency trustee. And yes, I deal with bankruptcy, I deal with proposals, but that's actually only a small part of, of my practice because really what the practice or what I do is I use the knowledge and experience from those insolvency scenarios that I've dealt with to identify risk and other challenges, as well as how to mitigate or correct past problems in order to allow a company to succeed in the future. And it's using that background of insolvency that we really are able to bring a value add to what I'll call the financial advisory services team. We're not just insolvency professionals. We sit on a much broader team of advisory, and that includes corporate finance. If it's for a, a, you know, so let's say somebody just needs help with the business plan or cash flow modeling or whatever it is, we have the expertise. We will identify what the problem is, sure. But then we will work with our other teams to help solve that problem. Uh, you might have M&A for if there's, let's say, divestiture. We'll find a business owner who actually has a, a pretty valuable enterprise, and they can sell off part of it, and, and that'll fix their problem. Well, if somebody calls me, I'm not going to say, hey, you should bankrupt this because there's another better solution there. And I think just because I work in bankruptcy, I, I, uh, I know what you're saying because a lot of people say, I'm, I don't want to call a licensed insolvency trustee. I'm not bankrupt. But it's very important to understand we have an expertise to identify problems, generally speaking, and using that expertise to tell you what your options are. And certainly, yes, sometimes it is going to be a Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act related remedy to fix the issue. But our success stories are when we absolutely do not have to use a bankruptcy tool because there are all these other remedies available. And the other part is very often we get, uh, we get calls from banks. A lot of what we do is advisory for uh, a lender to go in and, and advise the lender on what's the position of their loan for a company. So we have these working relationships with financial institutions, not to mention, we know what these financial institutions look for. Uh, a lot of people in insolvency came from banking. So when you have that knowledge and you have that experience, it's just a tool in our chest to be able to advise all these companies. So, you know, it's, Perhaps we should. Perhaps it's a marketing issue, and we shouldn't be uh, uh, marketing ourselves as, as licensed insolvency trustees because it really is only a, a subset of what we're capable of doing. And it's you know we we leverage the knowledge and past experience to to help advise companies that are a whole multitude of, of areas. Right. I like to refer to us as business advisors who do have a license to be able to use a federal act that provides us greater restructuring ability than, you know, a lawyer or a, or a non uh, LIT. And the reason is um, there's very powerful tools in the Bankruptcy Insolvency Act to help a company restructure, to keep the company afloat and get rid of the portions of it that are uneconomic. Um, but we're business advisors who just carry that special license. That's, that's how I've always looked at us. Um, so, we sort of talked about like why you would be the right starting point for a discussion if you're experiencing some difficulties. So maybe you could walk us through a scenario where a person comes in and go through the options you're looking for, how you approach it. Because as you've noted, you're not just approaching it as I'm a trustee, it's a bankruptcy proposal, move on. Let's go through that scenario, things you look for, and then the options you're exploring, and then the resources you bring to the table. So I'll have to unpack that a little bit. The first one would be, you know, sort of walk you through what the scenario looks like. Uh, very often a, a, when a business experiences some sort of trouble, and it, it's not just financial. It's not just, you know, they're not selling enough or various things happen in the global world, such as, uh, you know, uh, their shipment gets delayed because a, a ship's stuck in a canal. You know, there, there's, there's all sorts of issues that might come up, whether it's changes in management. So you have a few employees who left. And there's, even though it's not a financial-related directly at least, problem, there's always a financial implication to what happened. And then it tumbles out of control, and then your bank starts calling, and that's when the business owner starts saying, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. So, for example, not too long ago, a business owner, business owner comes to BDO and says, hey, I'm, my company's done. We're bankrupt. We have, we have no choice. we got to hand in the keys and, and walk away. Well, that, that, they just didn't understand what options were available to them or necessarily what value there was. And in that scenario specifically, we we're able to contact the bank and say, look, we're going to, our own m and team, BDO m and team is going to sell off a very large part of this business because we see the value that's there. But we had to use our insolvency experience and knowledge and relationships to work with this financial institution because otherwise they weren't going to wait for this company to sell itself. 
at the same time as leveraging our own other advisory team to conduct the sale. And at the end of the day, a business owner that came to us thinking, oh my God, my business is bankrupt and I'm in trouble, ended up with a, a very sizable amount of money in their own pocket because we were able to take them through this entire process. So there's a lot of options in that. There was some unique circumstances there and things had to be cleaned up, but whatever it is, there was, the BIA was not needed, the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act, so bankruptcy proposal, none of that was needed. And this business owner was provided with a solution that worked tremendously for them. So that's just one of the options. You're asking, you know, what are these options? Obviously, there's bankruptcies, proposals. Proposals allow you to make an offer to your creditors and settle past debts. But it's so much more than that. We, again, we're experts at identifying the problem and whatever that problem might be. So again, it, it could be staffing. It could be you need a bridge loan just for some, some financing purposes, but you have a plan. Or maybe you need help developing that plan so you can go to lenders. Or maybe you just need some outside resource for some HR issues or some, uh, some IT, some information technology issues, some software deployment, whatever it is. I'm, I'm not going to be the person to tell you how to fix that problem, but I, can, I have an expertise in looking at your financials and looking at what is behind your company and, and sort of saying, okay, here's your problem. Here's who we're going to have to bring in to fix that and, and what it might come out to at the end of the day. Well, thanks. The, the, I think the story was really good because it showed that you're approaching it from a holistic, how do I solve this problem? The person thought they had to go bankrupt. That wasn't the actually best solution for them. And we steered them in the right direction. I think it was also important to note that you sort of say, you know, banks call us when loans go into difficulty. And they're calling us saying, can you go in there and find a solution for us? Because we as the bank are worried about the loan. And the goal is to go in there um, help the company restructure, take them out of special loans back into the regular banking stream and help move them forward. So that sort of holistic approach to looking at all options, I think is critical. So let's assume though, that we identify that there is a problem and we are going to need to go down the road of a bankruptcy or a proposal. A lot of people are really, really concerned, like, you know, they'll ask questions like, well, if my company does a bankruptcy proposal, how does it affect me personally? Does it affect my credit? Is that on my personal credit bureau? Can you go into that for us? That's a question we get quite a lot. And as we, as we were talking about before earlier, there is a difference between what we'll say a sole proprietorship and a corporation. And a corporation is a separate entity that carries its own debts and they're not necessarily your debt. So just in a hypothetical scenario, let's say your corporation is bankrupt, that does not impact on the director or the owner's own credit score. And that is something that a lot of people are worried about and it's very clear. If your company goes bankrupt, your credit score is, is not, it's not gonna show up anywhere there. That being said, there is this intertwining of a director and their company that very often can lead, if things get pushed off too long, that can lead to those issues. So for example, we talked about the CRA having some special ability to go after a director for HST and source deductions being CPP and EI. Well, if you accrue too much from your company, certainly we can deal with that on the company side. But if you personally don't have the financial wherewithal to, set up, to, to satisfy those outstanding amounts, then you're gonna be in a situation where once you can't pay it, now it's gonna impact on your personal credit. So they are separate, but there's, such, there's so much intertwining between directors and business owners that very often, if, it stay, if you let it go too long, then yeah, it can impact your personal credit because you're not gonna be able to satisfy it. Let's say you have a five-year lease that you wanna break and you've personally guaranteed it, well, you're, you're gonna have to pay that. And if you can't, well, what are you gonna do? And it's, it's unfortunate. So I guess when you're meeting with small business owners, quite often you, you have to explore not only the business issues, but also the personal issues if they're intertwined. Is there any way if you're restructuring the company to be able to uh, help solve some of those director liability issues? Yeah, so there are, again, some of these special BI, the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act uh, tools that we have available to us as licensed insolvency trustees there are mechanisms available by which we can compromise these director liabilities. So if the ultimate goal is to make sure that there is a viable, successful business to go forward in the future, maintain employment for people in the community, and ultimately make a better offer to some of these banks to keep, a, or the creditors to keep a business going, part of that might be, hey, as a condition of, of keeping this going, we can 
we're going to say, yes, the director might have been liable for HST or source, but there's actually a way to compromise on that liability and allow a director to continue on without having to worry that these past debts are going to come and attack them personally. Okay. So if I was a business owner and I said, look, I'm struggling here and I got some financial issues and you've come in and said, you know, I, I think it's a cash, it's a fundamental, um, you were undercapitalized from the get go. It's a cash flow issue. You're going to struggle with some of your debts. Um, can you just quickly run through, like, do I have to pay all my debts back in a proposal? Do I pay a portion of them back? How's that work? It's, it's going to be unique to every circumstance. Every business is going to have its unique challenges and unique assets and unique cash flows. And, and only through a real review of what's available can, can we determine what you're going to have to pay. But the fundamental premise behind what is called a proposal is that you're going to potentially just pay a portion of what's owed to satisfy these debts and then have an ability to continue on business in the future. And that is a far better option uh, as opposed to having a bankruptcy and shutting these businesses down. Nobody wants to shut businesses down. Nobody wants to have to liquidate. And as long as the proposal provides a better option for everybody going forward, then that is the, the best route to take. And these, I, I wanna emphasize, these are extreme measures. These are only to be done when absolutely needed because uh, our successes are when we don't need to use those tools. It's when we find alternative methods to, to, to get these business owners to the end goal. Well, I think that was um, a really uh, good answer, Michael. And thank you for going through sort of the warning signs and some of the options for us. So I'm certain that there's going to be viewers out there that are sort of experiencing some of these issues and are sort of like, I would really like to talk to someone. So, um, Michael, how would people get a hold of you? So the, our website, bdo.ca, is uh, you're going to be able to find everybody on there and all our service lines and what we do. Uh, the other thing is just pick up the phone and give us a call. Right? We don't charge to, to, to speak on the phone. Our office line is uh, 705-797-3980. And feel free to give us a call at any time. Again, my name is Michael, and you ask for me, and I'm happy to chat. All right. Thanks very much, Michael. Uh, and I'd like to thank the viewers for watching again today. Um, if you have any comments or questions about the show, um, you can reach us by going to um, the Rogers TV, click on the home show page and send us any questions for future shows or comments on this show. Until next time, thank you very much and we'll see you in the next episode.